the method used to remove this ringoma by electro desiccation is very simple and this involves simply ablating the lesions remove syringoma by using electrical arcing. You've got to anesthetize the area, you've got to numb it, to numb it because it's very painful. The bolidocaine and this only doctors can use because of the or regulation. Aftercare. Aftercare is minimal after this type of procedure. You've got much more information on syringomaribol.com. On this page we're going to do a readout of the page called Syringoma Electrofulguration. This is, this is a readout um, and we've done a number of courses on how to remove syringoma using electrofulguration um, or electrical arcing or um, some people like it, we like to call it electrolysis but it's not as such. But we're going to make a video on the difference between electrical arcing and electrolysis in other, uh, in other videos. So what is electrofulguration? Electrofulguration or electrodesiccation are all synonymous of familiar methods used in cosmetic procedures. Electrodesiccation, electrolysis, is normally used for epilation, red veins removal, and other applications. Electrofulguration is generally used in cosmetic procedures because of the high degree of accuracy of the ablation of the benign skin lesions. The higher degree of precision at low power levels, less than 5 watts, makes this cosmetic procedure extremely effective. Electrofulguration normally occurs uh, without the return pad. The spark arc will occur between the tip of the electrode and the skin. Uh, at, as seen in the picture, uh, above. The advantage of electrofulguration is that the ablation is much more precise and superficial uh, than electrodesiccation but, uh, by using the return pad. For this reason, electrofulguration is, perform is, preferred, is the preferred option for cosmetic aesthetic treatments. So if you look at this, um, this picture here, um, electrofulguration is actually doing a, a more of a, um, a superficial treatment. Um, whereas electrodesiccation goes more inside the skin. As shown in the uh, above video, electrofulguration uh, is very effective in burning of the syringoma. One of the main advantages of electrofulguration is that or most of the syringoma can be removed in one session. Cosmetic results are usually excellent if the beautician is ta has taken care in leveling the syringoma off. The success rate of these procedures is very much dependent on the availability of the operator and the equipment used. The equipment has to have the capabilities to operate at very low power because the syringoma are very, uh, not very thick and powerful ablation could result in damage to the dermis and therefore permanent scarring. Uh, if you want to know more about this, then if we've got lots of videos in you. you watch this video below here, you'll actually understand it more, better. But this is the, the online training for our um, beauty tech. The, um, the method used to remove the syringoma by electro desiccation is very simple and this involves simply ablating the lesions from the top level. Um, it is off with the best, with the rest Oh, is level off, leveled off with the rest of the surrounding skin. However, since the syringoma reside inside the dermis as well, in order to minimize the recurrence, it is advisable to ablate them deeper inside the dermis. This is because um, it has been reported that most of the recurrence of syringoma is due to the fact that simply leveling off the syringoma with the surrounding skin is not sufficient to remove them completely and they will regrow soon after healing, a couple of weeks after the co cosmetic procedure. Um, and this is uh, what we mean by that is that if you just level them off with the surrounding skin, they will come back two to three weeks after because you haven't actually removed them completely. So you've got to go inside the dermis in order to remove them more effectively and to minimize the risks of recurrence. 
Um, numbing creams and anesthetics. Electrofulguration is usually uncomfortable for the client in many cases. The pain threshold does not allow to carry out the cosmetic treatment without a uh, form of numbing uh, um, or anesthetic product. In cosmetic or beauty clinics, the preferred option are topical anesthetics containing 5 emulsion preparation containing 2.5% lidocaine and pranocaine respectively, numbing creams like Emla. The prepar these preparations are available without prescription from your local chemist. These ready-made preparations are normally used also by tattoo artists to numb the area before tattooing. Since tattoo artists are not medically qualified in any country, they are, um, they are, there is usually a mild topical anesthetic available without a prescription available in your country. At dermatologist clinics, usually 20% concentrations are used in topical anesthetic creams. Normally local anesthetic injections are not required for this simple procedure. However, some doctors who are accustomed to administer an injectable lidocaine can opt for local anesthetic. The advantage of local anesthetic is that uh, the fact that they are be, they will be numb within a few minutes following the injection. So what I mean here is that basically whenever you do remove syringoma by using electrical arcing, you've got to anesthetize the area, you've got to numb it, to numb it because it's very painful. So there's three ways to numb it. Actually, let's make into two. One by using injectable anesthetics, which only doctors can do, and the other one using um, topical anesthetics, which is anesthetic creams. Now, anesthetic creams, there's, there's uh, two types. The ones that you get from the chemist with a prescription, which you usually um, use for tattoos before, um, before having a tattoo done. And those ones that are for medical use, which, has got a, which have got a higher concentration of lidocaine and other active ingredients. And the injectables. So this is what we're trying to say. And the ones that you get from the chemist are low acting. Normally you have to apply them for 40 minutes with occlusion, which is you've got to um, put some, uh, some foil on top of the of the anesthetic and keep it there for 40 minutes at least with it to, to an hour in order to have some effects. Then the stronger types with 20% uh, lidocaine or 5% uh, prilocaine, you just put it on top of your skin for five minutes and then the area becomes numb. And also uh, injectable anesthetics, injectable lidocaine, and uh, this only doctors can use because of the or regulation. Aftercare. Aftercare is minimal after this type of procedure. Although the risks of infections are very low, after a superficial cosmetic procedure, it is advisable to instruct the client to apply the appropriate antiseptic cream twice, uh, twice a day. Um, this, is, this will drastically reduce any further risks of mild infections in order to reduce the risks of hyperpigmentation. Sunscreen must be worn daily for at least three months after the last treatment. So this is all for this, um, this particular um, part of the website. So should you want to know more, we've got much more information on syringomaribol.com.